Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have 10 ideas for Christmas shelf sitters. They are going to be the perfect addition to your holiday decor. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing and becoming my crafting BFF. If you do like anything you see in today's video, do remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's get right into the DIYs. I love these little pocket envelopes from Dollar Tree. If you happen to see them, pick them up. And this little paper pack came from Hobby Lobby. It's normally $5.99, but you can pick it up on their 40 or 50% off sale. And it comes with all cute, all sorts of cute little die cuts and paper and stickers, all sorts of fun things. Now, I just traced that envelope shape out onto one of the sheets of paper from that pack. And I'm just cutting out the shape and I'm cutting out a little indentation so I can fit that paper down into the envelope so that way I can you only see like that plaid part coming out there and it completely covers the design that's on there since I'm going to make it Christmas instead of fall I thought this plaid was really really cute and I'm just using my trusty Elmer school glue there you guys I'm not sponsored by them or anything I just really love this glue and it works really well I don't have the most success with Mod Podge and so anytime I can get away with using this I do now, I did just stand around the edges of that paper, so that way you could get a crisp edge on that envelope there. And I'm just pulling out some cute little things to see what embellishments I want. I want to kind of stuff this and make a little whimsical scene. So I'm stuffing it with different types of florals, those cute little trees from Dollar Tree, and all sorts of things. Now, before I make anything permanent, I kind of do like a little... Uh, dry fit that I kind of find the little pieces that I would like to use in there. I mean, look at all these cute little things that come in this set. And um, at, once I find this little Merry Christmas thing to put on the front of the envelope here, that kind of starts my, okay, now I know what I'm doing. I thought that was super cute to add to the front. I'm just using hot glue to get this all stuck together here. So I'm just putting that little piece on the front there. And then it's just a matter of sticking everything else in where you want it to go. So I'm just using my hot glue to get these in. I love these little, these are, I want to call them juniper, but they're not juniper. They're cedar is what I think they call them. They've come from Walmart and I thought they were so cute. Those little berries on there are so delicate and so cute. And so I'm just sticking some of those in. I thought these little trees came from Dollar Tree. They came in a pack of like six of them or something. Uh, and they were different sizes. So I thought it would be cute to kind of have a staggered size there. So I just glue those in. And then this little um, deer here I thought was really cute to kind of have like a little woodsy scene. So I just put a little glue on his feet to kind of help stick him down in there. And I just really, I just wanted to make like a fun little whimsical scene here. And so hopefully that's what I achieve. It was actually quite relaxing to make this. I feel like it was, I didn't have a plan or anything. I just kind of went with it, whatever whatever looked good. Now these are just some of the Dollar Tree uh, like evergreen picks that they have that I kind of cut down uh, kind of at an angle to hopefully that they look like Christmas trees. And then I'm just gonna glue my little skater in. And I just use hot glue to stick all of these in. So whatever glue of your preference is that would probably work. I am just taking these little white berries. I thought they added a little bit of a pop, a cute little snowy visual interest there and I just kind of went for it like it was so relaxing like I said doing this it was a lot of fun so I hope if you find these little pockets you pick them up and make a cute little whimsical scene because it truly is a lot of fun I felt like it kind of needed a little something extra so I grabbed this little candy cane and I stuck it at the back there um, and I just thought that it kind of added that little pop that it needed in the back there, it kind of tied in a little bit of Christmasiness to it. And then I have these little itty bitty teeny evergreen things that I glued in there. Now I'm just thinking that I wanted to hang this maybe. And so I'm just using my staple gun to staple a little hang tag on there. It's probably too heavy for a Christmas tree, but oh, look at how darling this is. I think this turned out so cute. You could even glue some Jenga blocks on the back of it um, to have it stand if you wanted to do that. But I just this was so much fun and it just has that little bit of a vintage vibe to it I would I would love to know what you guys think of this one I think these little cutting boards that you're finding at Dollar Tree right now are absolutely adorable. These are found in their crafter's corner, kind of in the unfinished wood stuff that they have. I've seen them at my Dollar Tree several times. Actually, a few of the Dollar Trees that I have been to over the last few months, I've seen them. So hopefully you've been able to find them at yours. If not, I always just tell people, just keep checking. They'll eventually come. And always check DollarTree.com also. But remember on DollarTree.com to ship to your store. It saves you a lot of money instead of having to 
to pay shipping to your home. Now that is being said, all I'm doing on this is I just paint the bottom portion white and I go up the handle just a little bit and then I'm painting the rest of the handle here with black. And the black covers really good. This is just chalkboard paint. I only needed to do one coat on that. The white I did have to do two coats. And then I'm just taking a paint stir stick. This is one that I had used. I'd cut the end off for another project. I just cut it down and I just eyeballed the size. I'm making this cute little snowman and I just wanted this to be kind of the brim of his hat. And so I just eyeballed it. I don't have an exact measurement on what I did. I just laid it down and kind of went, that looks like a good size and that's where I cut it. So I just kind of wanted a little ski wampus there. I thought that looked kind of cute there and just using some hot glue, I put that down on the cutting board itself and then I just glue that little brim of his hat right down there. And you can kind of see it coming together hopefully already. And I did just get a little bit of smudging on that black so I just kind of went over it with a little what was left on the brush there to cover that up. Now I have these half beads. These came from Amazon. I can link them down in my description box below. And um, I, these are just kind of a smaller size and I thought they would be really cute to kind of look like pieces of coal for his eyes and his mouth. So I'm just going over them with some black paint and just making sure I get all of the edges and everything. And then on another paint stir stick, I am just cutting out a carrot nose. And I'm just kind of going from the end and cutting in towards the center at an angle, just like the shape of a carrot. And it just cut very easily with my scissors and I was able to get that shape out. And then I did go in and sand it a lot with my uh, emery board to get rid of any rough edges or anything like that. Next, I just glue with some hot glue the eyes and the mouth on and I just kind of space them out just by eyeballing it. And on this cute little carrot nose, I'm just using some orange paint to give it that carrot color. And then after I get that completely covered, I wanna make some little ridges on the carrot just to make it give it a little dimension, make it look like an actual carrot. This is just some mineral chalk paint that I'm using with just a little flat brush here. Uh, and you just kind of, just what looks good is what I'm doing. You could completely skip this if you were a little bit afraid to kind of go in or do this and I do like a couple and then a grouping of three and just kind of offset them all the way down the edge of the carrot. Now after that completely dries I go back in with a little bit more orange paint and just kind of cover them to dull them down so they're not quite so stark and that way they look a little bit more um like they're part of the carrot if that makes sense I don't know I always say if that makes sense but hopefully you can see what I'm showing there sometimes I can't find the exact words that I want to use and then I'm just going to use some hot glue on the back of this carrot and we're going to glue it onto the face of our snowman this cute little wooden snowflake came from a pack of wooden stickers from Dollar Tree. I just cover it with some white chalk paint and then after that dries, put some Mod Podge on it and I put a little bit of uh, glitter on there. I just thought that would be kind of a fun little thing for this little snowman's hat to have a shiny little snowflake there. This little piece of holly came from a pack of 12 from Hobby Lobby and then I glue that on and then I glue this cute little snowflake on the brim of his hat and I thought that was just the perfect little embellishment. I just think this little snowman turns out absolutely adorable. He would be perfect for a tiered tray or just anywhere you wanted this cute little snowman to smile back at you. I found these darling little three-dimensional trees at Dollar General, but I, I feel like I've maybe seen them at Dollar Tree before, so keep your eye open. I'm not 100% sure if I'm just dreaming with that, but anyhow, they're very cute. They were a dollar for the pack of three trees from Dollar General, and I just picked three different types of craft paper that I thought would be really cute to add for my trees. So I just trace each of the trees out onto some craft paper and then cutting them after cutting them out, I put some Mod Podge both on the wooden portion of the tree and the craft paper before I adhere one to the other. That's just going to give it a really good bond. And then I will just kind of trim up the edges on the branches. I do use my Mod Podge roller. You guys, I had never realized I needed a Mod Podge roller in my life until I got one. It is the best thing ever. But after I get all of my paper adhered to there, I do use a fingernail file to sand off the edges to make it really crisp and clear and then I take some antiquing wax also and kind of cover up that uh, those edges and you could leave the edges this is personal preference right here I just didn't like the bright uh, white wood color right there I just thought kind of an aged look would be really cute and kind of maybe look you know like the branches part of the tree I don't know so I just go through all the edges and do that and then you just slip these all together and they look so cute when they are done they are perfect for tiered trays they are perfect just to kind of tuck into that little area where maybe you need a little bit of Christmas decor something really easy and you can 
customize these to however you want for your decor is the best part. So it was so simple and so easy and look at how cute they are. They make such an impact and for not that much time and very inexpensive, you can have something very, very, very cute. This is just one of those chalkboard little stand frames that you get at Dollar Tree. It has a little piece on the back to help it stand up. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna paint the frame. So I'm just using some painter's tape to go around the inside of this because I wanna make sure the inside of the frame is painted, but I do not wanna deal with scratching paint off of the chalkboard surface itself. So I just make sure I line all of that up exactly how I want. And I'm going to go with just a classic red. I am using chalk paint, but acrylic paint, whatever paint you have, whatever color you wanna do, will work just fine. So I do go around all of the edges of this and I also paint the back of it. That way when you see it from all angles, it looks completely finished. Now I'm just peeling back that painter's tape and there's always, it's always so fun to peel that back and see that everything looks great. Now I have these stickers from Dollar Tree and I decided to use these because sometimes I use my Cricut for a lot of projects, but I thought it would be fun to kind of do this and show you that you don't have to have a Cricut to do every project, but definitely if you do have access to one and would rather do that or have some different letters you would want to do this with, use that. But I thought these letters looked really cute on this chalkboard here. So I'm just using a J and a Y and I have these little peppermint, um, um, it's a little sprig or floral pick that I got from Hobby Lobby. I bought it when it was 50% off, so it was like $1.50. And I'm just deciding which one I like the best. And I ultimately decide on this one right here. I thought that looked like a classic peppermint candy there. And just using some hot glue, I will just glue that in the middle to make the word joy. I just think that that is so cute. I love that. And I just love the red and white for Christmas with the peppermint. I just think that is so cute. And I decide that it needs a little something extra. You could definitely leave it the way that it was, but I'm just taking some different little floral picks that I have. These are the little evergreen strands that you get in a pack of like 12 from Dollar Tree. I just cut one, a few pieces of it. And then this is just a little bit of boxwood from uh, Walmart. I love to use this. It's like a dollar 98 and your a sprig will last you for several projects. It is wonderful stuff. So if you're at Walmart, check the floral section to grab this because I absolutely love it and it is so fun to use. And I thought it kind of added a little different element there for Christmas, um, a Christmas texture and everything. Now I have these little berries just from another pick that I've torn apart. So I'm just taking a couple off and I just put a little bit of hot glue onto the end of them and then just stick them in where I think they look best just to bring a little pop of red up to the top there. I felt that looked like a really cute holiday look there. And then I'm just taking these little curly cues also were on a pick that I had, but you could easily make some just with some floral wire. Uh, I thought a lot of times you'll find the floral wire that has the little coating on it there like these. And they, I just thought it added a little bit of texture. I thought it was really cute. I had a lot of fun actually picking out different pieces to put on the top of this. And I thought it was really coming together cute. This ribbon is from Dollar Tree and I just tied a double bow there. And then I'm just going to glue that right in the middle. When I glued it on there, I realized that the tails were a little bit long for how I wanted. So I do go in and kind of just cut those off uh, at an angle there. So that way, um, not really dovetail, but I guess just more of a slant there. You'll see here as I trim that up, just so you can see it doesn't kind of go over the joy there or the peppermint. I thought that it needed to be shortened a little bit, but look at how cute this is. I think this is darling. It would be so cute, like on a tiered tray or even just sitting out somewhere just to bring a little bit of joy to your space. I just thought this turned out absolutely beautiful. I love picking up signs like this at the craft stores. These particular ones came from Dollar Tree. It doesn't ever matter what they say because I'm always going to make them over. So I just peeled the paper back and it leaves a little bit of this backing that's been glued onto this. And these are not the wood signs from Dollar Tree. These are more like of a composite material. So I just spray them with water and let them soak for a few moments. And then you'll see that this just peels right off. And even though like the top layer kind of peels off, as you can see here, if you spray it again and let it sit for just maybe another minute, you'll be able to take your scraper and as you see, it will just scrape right off of there. It's kind of actually pretty satisfying getting all of that off of there. It is a little bit sticky with the glue, so you do just wanna wash your hands after so you don't get glue on everything.
The shortest of these signs was about 10 inches and I'm going to leave that as is. I won't be cutting that one. It will be the bottom of my stack here. The next one I will cut down to eight inches and then I cut one down to six inches. And then that left a little piece off of the one that I end up putting on the top that is four inches. So I just go down two inches on each. So there's, if that makes sense, hopefully you can see that there's an inch on each side. Now my top two tiers of this little snowman stack that I am making, I will paint black. This is going to be the hat portion of my snowman and I'm just using some chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. One coat did very good coverage on these so I didn't have to do that. Uh, I'm just using some white chalk paint here on the bottom two stacks. It did take about three coats to get the coverage that I wanted. Now I just need to glue my little snowman face together here. So I'm just using a combination of E6000 super glue would work too. You could probably even just do hot glue since this won't be getting probably a lot of use other than just sitting on a shelf. I just thought I would make it a little bit more of a permanent hold if it fell over or anything. I don't know. I just thought the E6000 added a little bit of an extra bond on there. So that's up to you. I know a lot of people comment that they cannot stand the smell of E6000, which it definitely has an odor, but it doesn't bother me too much. Anyhow, I'm just gluing this all together here, each stack, just making sure that I get it uh, so it's all even. And then I have these little wooden discs. I got this in a package. I bought a, like a big box of craft materials material at a yard sale. However, be creative if you find something like bingo chips or something like that at the Dollar Tree. Use something like that. Uh, you could even just use wooden half beads or something if you happen to have those. Uh, be creative. Anything will work. Now I'm just taking a paint stir stick and I am just using my scissors to cut out a carrot nose. Just kind of a triangle shape and as you saw my scissors cut through there pretty decently and so I was able to get that shape. Very rustic look which is what I was going for. I'm going to paint my carrot orange and then I am going to paint some little teeny ridges on my carrot there to kind of give it a little bit of dimension. Now after I dry those I go back over with the orange paint to kind of make them look a little bit uh, faded so that way they weren't so stark and obvious. Now I just go back in and I'm just using some hot glue to glue on the eyes and the mouth. I like to lay it out before I glue it so I have an idea of where I'm going and make sure everything is spaced right and looks good. And then again, this part I just do with hot glue and it goes rather quickly. So now I just position the nose. I put a little bit of glue along the nose on the back. I did not want that nose to hang over the edge. So I put it right up to the edge there, but I didn't want it to like get broken off. But that's just up to you. If you want to have it hanging over the edge, that would be really cute as well. So now we're just going to tuck some little foliage into this snowman's cute little hat here. And I'm just using a combination of like little spare parts, if you will, that I have from different picks. So I have like some lamb's ear. There's a little bit of the boxwood. These, those both came from Walmart. These berry picks came from Dollar Tree. And then I have this little evergreen that I'm really, I think it came on a plant that my mom gave me. I don't know. It came from somewhere, but I just got a bunch of little things. When you're doing a little hat like this that you want some variety, you don't have to have like one whole pick. Just you know, use your spare parts, what you've got, and that works great. And I decided to have some glued kind of up towards the top of his hat and some kind of coming down. So when I put that ribbon band on, it looks like some peeking out below. And I just used some hot glue to put that on the back. This ribbon just came from Dollar Tree. I love this cute little gingham ribbon. And as you see, I'm just going to flatten that down on the back there. Now I'm going to do a cute little bow here. I just tied a couple loops on a little bow there and put a zip tie in the middle to put on his hat and I thought that bow looked really cute. Now, of course, if a bow is not your style, do not put a bow on there. I had someone comment in my last video that asked if I had to put a bow on everything. Yes, I do have to put a bow on everything because that's what I like. Uh, it might be impossible for me to not put one on there. If it's not your style and you're making this, please make it to how you like it. Now, I'm just taking a little bit of the leftover black paint in my brush and just kind of dry brushing the edges. I wanted to give this a little bit of dimension and I really like the way that it looked on the nose to kind of help that pop. Now you can go as light or as heavy as you like on this. I don't really consider this like distressing. I feel like this is just more giving it a little bit of dimension. It looked kind of flat with just the white paint there. Or, and then here I take the white that's left over in my brush and I'm going to go over all of the black parts here. So just over the edges of his hat kind of looked a little bit like it was frosted there. And then 
then I really like the look going over the little round discs here. It really did make those pop against um, that black against the white there, the edges. It just kind of gave it just a really good dimension and I really loved it. I think this turns out absolutely darling. What do you guys think of him? Would you put him on one of your shelves for this Christmas season? I just love him and I really feel like snowmen are just the essence of winter and Christmas and it is something that you can make as Christmassy as you want but they can also stay up all winter long. Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. I've been seeing these windows a lot more at Dollar Tree. I keep hoping that they bring more and more different styles of them out because they're so fun to do DIYs with. This one is just kind of like a chipboard type material. Uh, in the springtime, I've seen like the plastic, almost like a frame type material, and they've had like the little words in the center of them. This is nice because it doesn't have any words in the middle. I don't have any glue I have to remove or anything. It just has that little sign at the bottom, which I am going to cover up. These tree ornaments all came from Hobby Lobby. The two white ones came in a pack of like four for just a couple of dollars and the other one came from just the ornament section. But Dollar Tree does have the wooden cutout ones that you could easily use for this if you could find them. I just haven't been able to find any of those yet this year. Now I have this wreath that came off of a garland that I had bought so I could cut all the little wreaths off of it and I'm just but you could easily use I showed you those little evergreen picks from Dollar Tree you could use those to use a, for the wreath instead. Now I'm just gluing those trees down if you wanted to paint these a green color or you wanted to put some scrap of paper or something on them to give it a little bit more visual interest go ahead and do that do what you have what works for you i just wanted this to kind of have more of a neutral color uh, i really love how this turns out but I, I just glue those two on the side there so they're kind of covering that sign up there on the bottom and then i'm just going to glue this in the middle so i'm just kind of um eyeballing where I want it to sit and I do want this window to stand so when I glue it on I will kind of stand it up to make sure that all of the trees are flat and it's not going to be like front heavy and flip it over and you can kind of see me doing that here and then the one ornament does have the hole in the top and I will cover that up with a cute little bow now I'm just showing you here if you wanted to glue some tumbling tower blocks onto the back to help that stand up that would be an option for you but I end up doing something else but just showing you how that looks if you want to do that now look how cute that little wreath looks on this cute little window there I got the, some buffalo check ribbon I stuck with that neutral kind of farmhouse palette and I just tied that in a little shoestring bow and put that right over the top of that and I thought it would be fun to tie the wreath in with another bow as well. I, I do have a commenter every once in a while that asks me if I have to attach a bow to everything. Yes, I do. It's me. Do what works for you. If some berries would be really cute glued around that wreath, leave it plain, do a twine bow, whatever is your style, go ahead and do that. So I'm just gluing that wreath on there because I thought that looked really, really cute. And then I have this little riser that I made in one of my tiered tray videos. It's just a coaster with some little beads on the bottom of it for some little feet and I'm going to affix this to the back of this because I want to use it to have a candle now you could easily use one of these signs that like from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby if you don't want to make a riser go ahead and paint it up and glue it onto the back and it's going to work just fine you could even just put a candle behind it and I'm just showing you here the coaster these came from Hobby Lobby uh, and I just put some plaster over the front of it to paint it if you would like to do a candle just behind it but I wanted the candle raised a little bit but I set that coaster down and I put one of my favorite candles from Amazon which I'll link below these are just battery operated candles and I just thought this was a darling little window with that little light shining behind it this is going to be so elegant and beautiful and not only is it great for Christmas but it's going to be perfect for all winter long 
I have this cute little sign. I got it at Hobby Lobby last summer. I made a cherry sign out of it for my cherry tear tray that I did in the summertime. And when I got this sign, it was about $6 or so, I think, but I bought it at 50% off. And so it was well within my $5 range. But when I made it, I don't even remember what it said on the original side, but I painted over what it actually said. And I think in my video, I actually mentioned like, oh dang, that was kind of silly of me because I could have flipped it over and have a double-sided sign. So in the back of my head, looking at this sign, I thought I can use it for another project and have it be a double-sided sign. So I thought this would be perfect. Now I'm just painting it red. I thought it would be good because it would match the front side of that sign. And I did see, um, or as you saw, I had to put some painter's tape down because I'm not very good at not getting paint everywhere. So I used a little bit of painter's tape. Now I'm just taking these stencils. These come from Dollar Tree. I love them so much. I buy them all the time when I find them. So if you don't ever see them, keep checking because they will come in. I have to thumb through like several that are there sometimes to find these because I swear when Dollar Tree stocks them, they just like put whatever they get on front of whatever's already there. <laughs> and so sometimes you have to search all the way to the back to find the ones you're looking for but Hobby Lobby Walmart any craft store carries a very good selection of stencils so if you don't see them at Dollar Tree you can always check there as well now one thing that I do is I'm going to take a little bit of tape I forgot to do this in the beginning but I will tape off the letters on either side of the letter that I actually want to stencil and that's going to stop any bleed through or anything like me stenciling part of the design I don't want to have show up on my my surface there so I'm having to say ho ho ho. I thought that would be really cute. It was the exact number of letters to do that. I was wanting to do something that said Santa, but then I thought, well, that's too many letters. And then ho 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 popped into my head and I thought that would be really cute. Now on the back of this sign, it does say cherry but that's okay because I thought with the night before Christmas that it um, talks about his nose looking like a cherry so if you saw it from either side it would be okay and my tiered tray that I use this for when I use it on the cherry side you don't see the back of it because it's a little bench so I felt like it worked okay um, but obviously I mean they sell these at Hobby Lobby they're in the tiered tray section so you can get them and customize them to your own needs if you want and leave the one side the way it came from the store however you want to do it. It would even be really easy to make with using some of the jumbo craft sticks with some uh, tumbling tower blocks. So I may have to do that in one of my videos because I think you could replicate this pretty easy for fairly inexpensive also. But I mean, really it was only a couple of dollars anyway. Now I'm holding this upside down when I do these stencils because I felt like that is much easier when I'm lining those letters up and everything rather than having to deal with the bulky base to it. So I felt like it was easier to have that at the top. Now when I stencil letters like these, I'm using a stencil brush from Dollar Tree. Um, they come in a pack of three. I take them and I will cut off the bristles to be flat for my stencil so and then that, that way it you get really good coverage but look at how cute this turns out I think this looks absolutely darling it's going to be so cute on my tear tray I cannot wait to show you guys this So I have this little snow globe from Dollar Tree and also an ornament that I found at Walmart that I absolutely loved that has a nativity on it. And by a happy coincidence, it fits perfectly with the snow globe. So I just removed the design that was on the snow globe because I wanted it to be um, so you could see the front and the back and not have to worry about that. So I did just take that little paper design on there. Now this ornament is double sided. So I am going to use both sides of it for two different DIYs today so it took just a little bit of prying with my putty knife but it did pop right off so I will paint my snow globe globe completely white and I believe I paint it all over white so really you probably don't have to take that paper design off but it does it makes it so it won't like bubble up or anything like that the paper won't get wrinkly if that makes sense at all and then I take some and I use my sandpaper just to kind of smooth the paint because I wanted it to have not just to be really smooth and just with some hot glue i put that little nativity scene on there like i said it just fits so perfect i did decide it needed something around the edge to finish it off so i am just using a little bit of hot glue and this is sped up quite a bit so i really did take my time with this but i would put just a little bit of hot glue and go around with my jute twine to kind of give that edge a little bit of something extra Thank you. 
after I finish the twine around the edge, I do wrap about three or four, five or six, I don't know, quite a few little layers there just around the bottom. I thought that added a little bit more texture to the bottom and tied in the twine around the edge of the nativity scene. After I tie this off, I look at it and think it needs a little bit more substantial of a bow there. So I just wrap the twine around my fingers three or four times to make more loops. I thought that looked a little bit better. And then I'll just tie that off in the middle with another piece of twine. And then using some hot glue, I will just stick it over that knot. And then the little uh, tails that come off the bow, I'll just cut those off and those will serve as my tails. The song, The Holly and the Ivy, does talk about Christmas Day and the birth of Christ quite a bit, and so I thought a nativity was perfect, so I love that this ties that in. I also felt like it could use a little bit of color, and so I have these darling little pieces of holly from Hobby Lobby. Uh, it was a couple of dollars for this whole sheet of them. And so I just took one of them off and just glued it like it was coming out of the bow there. I thought that added such a beautiful little touch to it, a little bit of color. And also for me, just a, a nice little reminder of the correlation between the holly plant and Christmas Day, the birth of Christ. I absolutely love how this turned out. I think it is so simple and so elegant. What do you guys think of this one? I saw these cute little glass votive jars at Dollar Tree earlier last year and so I picked up a couple of them and so I have one and since I'm going kind of with a blue theme I thought this would be perfect. And I also have these snowflakes that are from Hobby Lobby. I got them at 50% off and uh, you may already have some snowflake ornaments that you use. Even like the little foam uh, snowflake scatter that you get at Dollar Tree, you could do this with. So whatever you can find to work, this is just giving you some inspiration. These were tin and so I was able just to take a little barbecue skewer and just kind of slide it up in there. So that way, I'm gonna make a little floral arrangement, but that way they would just kind of stand up in there. Again, if you find the little foam um, snowflake Snowflakes, you could just stick that skewer right into those and do that with it or the wooden snowflakes from Dollar Tree You could easily glue onto the skewers. Whatever you have that you could use would work just fine Now I am just taking some pieces of florals that I have left over from other projects I did throughout the season So just it's a good way to use some of your little bit of like pine uh, Evergreen florals that maybe you had one or two sprigs left of left over from Christmas. And so I'm just cutting those down, what I've got and making them the size that I want them. I also used a little bit of eucalyptus in there because it has that really like silvery color. And I thought that was really appropriate for winter time. And then I also have this little silver eucalyptus here from uh, Dollar Tree that is very sparkly and glittery. And I thought that was fun. It just added a little bit of shimmer to the arrangement. Use whatever you have. I mean, I'm sure if you've done any crafting through the holiday season, you may have like a piece here or there or now, you know, to hang on to them because there's always something you can find to do to stick a little sprig of something somewhere. And then I just stick those snowflakes in there. I don't show it, but I do end up tying a little twine bow around the lip of the jar, the ring of the jar, just to kind of add a little bit of softness to it. But it does have that little handle on it. And you could do this with any jar, any vase that you have. I just did the blue since that's what I had on hand. But I think this turns out so cute cute. It's going to be just kind of a cute little wintry look just set on a shelf and it's just going to add that softness with the greenery. I love how this turned out. I love this adorable sign at Walmart that says Santa stop here. It's little, it's cute, it's perfect for a tiered tray or something and I just thought it was darling. And last time I was at Dollar Tree I picked up this little round sign and I thought this would be the perfect dupe. So I'm first just giving this a coat of red chalk paint here. I quickly realized you can still see those letters through there so I'm painting a layer of white over to act as a primer to give a little bit better coverage. I did have someone leave me a tip to try to do gray paint when you're painting red over it. So I'm going to try that next time. That's a great tip. So I'm definitely going to give that a try. But you can see that red paint when it goes on, it gives me much better coverage and you can't see the words underneath there at all. Now, if you did want to spray paint this, you might be able to do that and get a little bit um, more even coverage or a little bit more of a shimmer to it. So that is an option as well if your weather allows you to do so. Now the one at Walmart had this cute little topper on it and the one from Dollar Tree did not. So all I did to fix that problem 
is I just grabbed one of these little barbecue skewers and then a little teeny finial. I get the finials at Hobby Lobby. I can leave a link to the ones on Amazon, but they come in a pack of like five or 10 or so, and they're perfect for adding like feet onto little risers or things, but it was the perfect little finial for the top of this sign. So I just used a little bit of uh, my strong like super glue there to adhere that on. I thought that would work a little bit better than hot glue since it is metal and wood that I'm working with. And then I had painted it white before and I thought that added just the perfect little touch to the top of the sign. I went on Cricut Design Space and found a couple fonts that matched pretty close to what the original inspiration piece had and I just went ahead and did the Santa stop here and then I also added a couple of little asterisks and little dots on there just like the inspiration piece had. I tried to match it as close as I could and I think that it turns out super cute. This would be perfect if you have like an elf that visits your home at Christmas time to make sure that your little elf knew exactly where you wanted Santa to stop. It would be perfect for a tray. I think this turned out so cute and it came from Dollar Tree and I don't recall exactly how much the one at Walmart was but I think I did a pretty good job recreating it. What do you guys think? Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you guys enjoyed these. If you did have a favorite, be sure to let me know down in the comments. And if you would like to see more shelf sitter videos, I love creating little DIYs like this that are kind of easy and fun to do. So if you definitely want to see more, let me know down in the comments. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.